the new owners are first time purchasers in golfs. They're delighted, they're going to rear her in France and race her there, so it's good. It's unbelievable, it's great, like it's a great, great day altogether. She made more than we, we expected, you know. Golf's done a very, very good job, there's a good bunch of holes here. Everyone is here, there's nobody missing. Surprised and pleased, you know, you'd hope you get that kind of money, but you know, until you get it, you're never, you're never sure. I love this complex, it's very easy to work, it doesn't take a lot to cover the whole draft of the horses and they're a great company, good people and Irish people are a lot of fun. We were sort of hoping to get half of it, but Goffs has done a fantastic job here getting everyone here. They come to Goffs to sell two foals, the first of which has made €170,000, so we're all very ecstatic for them, it's fantastic. Goffs did a fantastic job getting some very smart foals here. I'm pretty happy to own a Frankel mare in fold of my very own Star Spangled Banner. So at the end of what's been a busy and frenetic week here at Goffs, selling an enormous amount of horses, foals and breeding stock, reflecting now with Group Chief Executive Henry Beebe. Henry, what were your expectations coming into this week? It's a massive undertaking for you and your team. Yeah, it's our biggest week of the year in terms of numbers. It's the longest sale we have. There's always a great sense of anticipation. I think having seen the yielding market, we, we predicted the sale quite correctly. We anticipated what was going to happen. I mean, if you look back at the Orby sale, where we sold the two highest priced yielding fillies in the world, and we had a really strong sale, we were delighted with that. So we thought the top of the market would be strong, and that proved to be the case, both the foals and the mares. Huge competition at the top of the market, but challenges further down, because the yielding market, uh, further down the scale, was, far, was rather more selective. And we certainly saw that in the foal sale uh, and in the breeding stock sale. So it was, it was a bit like a football match, a game of two halves. At the very top, very, very strong, uh, lower down, very, very challenging. So um, I think I was saying to somebody yesterday that I've seen the market in the last 30, 35 years when I've been in the industry, I've seen it be very strong, I've seen it be weak. I've rarely seen it as strong and weak at the same time as we are at the moment. So the really good horses, the Galileos, the Sea the Stars, the Dubarbys, the Frankels, are selling really well, the Invincible Spirits. But lower down the scale, it's, it's, it's quite tough for some of the breeders and you know, we'll have to think about that as we look to next year. Can I introduce a, an even more complex concept in a sense, insofar as that particularly with the foal sales, the better foals, it wasn't just a question of the, the huge battalions, the huge breeders doing well and the small breeders doing badly. We had stories of people with smaller bands of foals doing being extremely well and being very happy. Absolutely, that's always the case. And there's a wonderful story we had at the start of her career and the end of her career. We saw Paddy Burns selling the top lot for 350,000. And we saw Noel Finnegan, who's been selling continuously in Goss for 60 years, even longer than you and I have been alive. That is a labor uh, of love, yeah. isn't it? Well, absolutely. I mean, maybe maybe the very the many generations of Goss have got a few things right, but he got 250,000 uh, euro for his fall. So it's wonderful to see that, but you're quite right. And you know, you talk to Des Layden, they've got a very Small band and they did very well. And there were bought a lot the of very good stories. Bought the mare for two grand, I think. It bought the mare for two years grand ago. and got 170,000. We're absolutely delighted. And you saw, you know, you saw some of the big buyers and again the one-man bands as well. So it is a sale of there's huge diversity. There's people from all over the world. It's all levels of the market. It's from the very top uh, down to the lower end as well. So we're trying probably over six days to cater to absolutely every level of the market, every sector, uh, foals and mares, fillies off the track, mares in foals. Um, so we, we're, we're looking after everybody as well as we can. Yeah, it might not be a sort of show business sale, but it's a, it's a very rich tapestry. It's a very interesting one to be at. The, the breeding stock sale was very interesting because you, you were always trying to attract international people to, to, to this sale ring. And in a sense, you, you achieved that because the, the top five lots were, were five different countries. Five different countries. You've got you know, Japan, Mr. Yoshida, who is one of the biggest breeders in the world. Uh, Yulong Investments from China. We had buyers from France outside of Bloodstock at the top of the market for both foals and mares from Spain. So we had buyers from all over the place, Australians, New Zealanders, Americans. We were, yeah, it's, it's absolutely, we've always said to Irish breeders that Goffs is the gateway to the world for them. And a sale like the Goffs November sale proves that year in, year out. Every year it is like the League of Nations here. And it's wonderful to have them coming back. They come here because they know they get the best of Irish and the best of Irish is the best in the world.